and welcome to Way to Fire. This is our now annual Christmas quiz, and I'm joined by my host Andy. Hello, it is annual if it's more than once, isn't it? Yeah, 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 definitely. (laughs) Hi, all, Merry Christmas. Yes, we are looking suitably festive. Andy has even gone to the extent of having a Christmas jumper as well. So, well, I've got a, a sports jumper on, so sorry about that. Let the side down a bit there. Right, so we have some questions for you today uh, to test your general knowledge, your gaming knowledge, your geek knowledge, uh, and uh, all those sorts of things, really. So uh, it's a little bit different from last year because we didn't organise it very well, if we're honest, do we, Andy? No. It's going to be high quality, but in a rather random fashion. Definitely, yes. Uh, no special guests this year, which is uh, because we just decided to do it at the last minute, to be honest. Yeah, we're special enough. Yeah, exactly right. So, but we have got uh, a couple of different rounds. We've started with a movie posters round, and then from there we'll go into kind of a potluck uh, nerd knowledge round. Okay, so I think that uh, sounds fair enough, doesn't it? So, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, right. Okay, let's fire up the. There are eight movie posters that we have uh, subtly changed, uh, <laughs> so you can not but see if you can spot how subtle the differences are. Yeah, uh, hopefully you won't be able to uh, guess them straight away. You'll have to look at them a bit more carefully. But here we go anyway. So uh, there are eight of these. Let me just uh, share my screen to you. Right, so hopefully you are seeing that on there now. Uh, So this is movie poster number one. Um, So have a look at that. See if you can tell me what the film is. That's the title, which is hiding with that big spoiler alert there. I had to whack on there. So... Uh, There's certainly some very dashing characters in this. Uh, I think that the, the lead actors in these uh, eight movies are particularly yeah. um, examples of their craft. I would uh, so that's number one. <laughs> number two, it looks like this. There just, we go. just a normal uh, normal Friday evening for me. Yes, I, I'm, I'm just uh, having a sip of beer in between the uh, pictures there while my uh, screen is shared. Uh, number three looks like this. Ah. You can see me sucking it in there, can't you? <laughs> You're looking very dramatic. Yeah, it's surprisingly <laughs> dramatic, really. I mean, I have been working out a bit more, but <laughs> not that much more. Whereas I have bought a cape. And I don't <laughs> it. it covers a multitude of sins. It really does. It, it's, a, it's a very flattering garment, I found. It's a, a, it, it's a post-COVID look that everyone needs. <laughs> a giant cape. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, number four looks like this. Uh, can you tell us which this movie uh, poster belongs to? You do look suspiciously evil there, actually, Hal. You've uh, got that the, sort of evil mastermind smirk on. The only thing you're missing is a catastrophe. stroke. Uh, you know what? I, I've kind of cultivated the look either of a kind of a, like a drug dealer henchman or an <laughs> evil genius. I'm not quite... I'm, or somewhere in, in between. Maybe I should work for the Maison Labs. I don't know, possibly. <laughs> Number five uh, looks like this. Ah, don't punch me! One will fall, but which one? I think we know. One's got tiny arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, okay, let's, let's gloss over that one and go to uh, number six, which is this one. Al, you shouldn't have used that picture of me with my shirt off. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I like the way that you, uh, You've not tanned your face, but just your body. <laughs> you got one of those um, tanning pods, but it's not big enough. <laughs> <laughs> it just sits at the top. <laughs> it's a perfect <laughs> neckline. Okay. Uh, number seven looks like this. <laughs> Spicy. You, I was going to say, you're looking very... Um, uh, <laughs> I'm looking like I've just been dropped in the middle of the desert. <laughs> no spoilers. There's, there's, it might not be in the oh, desert. Yeah. No? It's Tatooine. Tatooine. Uh, and uh, number eight, our final movie poster looks like this. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> that, is, that is genuinely how I go to work, actually, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is number eight. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And we well, I enjoyed those. I don't know about anybody yeah, well, else. Well, we'll, we'll <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> right, let me hide them away. Never to see the light of day again. It's not like they're going on YouTube or anything. <laughs> no, no, no. 
So we've got eight eight questions there. Each worth a point. Yes, I think each of them. You can give yourself a, a tasty point if you've uh, got any of those right. And then we have a series of standard questions, really, haven't we? Now the the. There are 35 of these standard questions. So, yes, these are more traditional. We'll do, do them one each. So, so, uh, so that gives you a total score available out of the classic zero to 43. Well, it is <laughs> it, it is the score that, that everyone's hoping for. 43 is that kind of dream. A nice round number. <laughs> we, I, want, I want to say we didn't run out of ideas or anything for the questions, but... Ah, uh, there it is. Well, to be fair, I was expecting 15 questions. The fact we got to 43 was pretty good. Well, yeah. 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 Anyway, it's out of 43. It's out of 43. Um, uh, and uh, they are, we've, I've, I've generously called it the potluck round because there's kind of a bit of everything in there. There's uh, a bit of mythology in there. There's a, a bit of, of gaming in there, I'd say. Um, uh, well, let's, let's see how we go. Oh, Andy, do you want to start off with number one then? Yeah, I'll start with number one. So, you don't read the answers out to after. Not the answers at all. No. Okay. We'll do that okay. at the end. What range of miniatures is produced by Warhost and Footsaw miniatures and includes such heroes as Robin Hood and Maid Marion? Answers on a postcard. Well, actually, that'll take too long. Just keep the answers to yourself. That's it. No, no spoilers in the comments like last year. Come on, guys. Uh, uh, right. Do put do put your scores in the in the comments and yeah. feedback stuff like that yeah. because obviously we like to know who's got a good score. Yeah. Forty three out forty three. Did anyone manage to get to the mythical forty three? So uh, question uh, it will be question ten, won't it? For, um, this, we're going to go wrong with this because we've not numbered it right. Question two in the potluck round: uh, What is the kingdom your rangers defend in the game Rangers of Shadow Deep? What is the kingdom that your rangers defend in that Rangers of Shadow Deep game? I've not a chance to play that. Yet. I've read the rules, but really, oh, it's good. We should have a go. Yeah, I just did a lot of five parsecs. The next question. I'm glad I've got this one. Actually, I really this has touched a nerve for me. This one. Which British legend sees a knight don a suit of spiked armor to defeat his enemy? Which British legend sees a knight don a suit of spiked armour to defeat his enemy? I wonder if we catch anyone out there. Maybe people... Oh, yeah, that's a blast from the past. I, mean, I remember an Osborne book I read as a kid that was, had, you know, that classic sort of cartoony but cool art that they used to use. Definitely. Um, so question four in this round. Who is hunting for the six-fingered man in the movie The Princess Bride? So who's hunting for the six-fingered man in the movie The Princess Bride? He's got six fingers. The awkward okay. glove he has. Mm. Next question, number five. Who wrote Little Wars in 1913 and is often considered the father of war games? Who wrote Little Wars in 1913 and he's often considered the father of war games. It may yeah. not be who you think it is. I wonder if we used this question last year, but I can't remember. I can't remember either. Uh, well, I couldn't remember it anyway. I couldn't remember the answer. It's a good question. It's a good question. Difficult one. Okay. Um, question six of this round. Who was the mysterious murderer at large in Whitechapel in 1888? God. <laughs> 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 who was? <laughs> That'll be a viral meme. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's not do that action again. <laughs> Who was the mysterious murderer at large in Whitechapel in 1888? Question seven. What Prussian military training game teaches battlefield tactics? Mm. What Prussian military training game Teaches battlefield tactics. I think I need to play that game. My tactics are shocking. <laughs> Just really angry tiddlywinks. <laughs> okay, uh, question eight in this round. Um, 
which 2021 sci-fi skirmish game was criticised for its confusing symbols for movement? So which sci-fi skirmish game had a series of confusing symbols for movement that created some criticism? That's question eight. Question nine. Particularly associated with Scotland, the Kelpie is a water spirit which often appears in the form of which animal? The Kelpie is a water spirit which often appears in the form of which animal? I'd have got this wrong. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit of a strange one, that's not it? A um, bit niche. Okay, uh, back to the gaming then. Number 10, which sports game of giant robots and monsters was released by Mantic Games this year? So 2021, which uh, game of giant robots and robots and monsters was released by Mantic Games this year? Hmm. Okay, question 11. What sci-fi skirmish game, often called the best sci-fi skirmish game, received a third edition in 2021. If you're used to watching the channel, I think you'll get this one. Yeah, why it's called the best sci-fi skirmish game? Because it's... Yeah, obvs. <laughs> so which sci-fi skirmish game, often called the best sci-fi skirmish game, received a third edition in 2021? Excellent. Right, bang up to date now with this one. Check you. Number 12. The Silver Bayonet by Joe McCulloch is set during which war? So the game, The Silver Bayonet uh, by Joe McCulloch, Joseph McCulloch, uh, is set during which war? That's a very good question, Hal. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think that it's quite current for our channel at the minute. Hmm. Uh, the Banshee Sorry, question 13. The Banshee from Irish mythology, what does her shriek foretell? I've completely asked this one up. <laughs> You've got the sense of it. The, the Banshee comes from Irish mythology. Her shriek foretells which of these events in a family? Question 13. I, I think it's badly written that. I, th I don't think it's your, your fault. <laughs> I, think, I think whoever wrote that question... <laughs> I'll do it again. Question 13. The Banshee from Irish mythology. What event in the family does her shriek foretell? There, there we go. We got there. Third time's the channel. Okay. Uh, number 14. What sci fi variant of Frostgrave was released by Osprey Games this year? So, 2021, what was the sci fi variant of Frostgrave called? That's, that's that one. Question 15. What nautical sounding war games company has a prolific hard plastic release schedule? What so nautical? It's so many. <laughs> There are so many, but this one's particularly prolific. What nautical sounding war games company has a prolific hard plastic release schedule? Nautical. Nautical. Ah, that narrows it a touch. Ah, we were just talking about this before. Number 16, the eponymous hero of The Witcher is Geralt of where? Hmm. So uh, where is uh, our Witcher hailing from? So that's number 16. The eponymous hero of The Witcher, Geralt, is from where? Swindon? Luton? Yeah, somewhere around there, I reckon. Yeah. Home counties, isn't he? I reckon. No. Question 17. In English legend, Lady Godiva is connected to which city in England? In English legend... Lady Godiva is connected to which city in England? <laughs> She's going to catch her death, though, that woman, I tell you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, 18 brings us to a classic fancy movie series. So which classic fancy movie series uh, is 20 years old this year? Um, so the classic fancy movie um, 
20 years old this year. Yay, it's awesome. It's still really good, actually, isn't it? It's despite being 20 years old. Well, it does age me quite a lot now. Mm. Aged me, rather. It's a it's aged better than I have. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, question 19. One of Britain's most famous legends relates to a monster living within which large lake in Scotland? Ah. One of Britain's most famous legends relates to a monster living within which large lake in Scotland? <laughs> yes, good clue. <laughs> um, sticking with the mythological uh, theme, what... Sorry, is, is that monster mythological? I don't know, maybe not. Uh, what um, festive European mythological monster also appears in the Hellboy comic series? So what festive European mythological monster appears in the Hellboy comic series? That's genuinely our first Christmas-related question. <laughs> well, we've got our... It's really hard to get Christmas-related questions in wargaming and like geek culture and stuff. Yeah, to be fair, we're wearing our Christmas hat, so... Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> right, uh, where were we up to? All right, question 21. What is the real name of the valuable psychedelic spice in the Dune series of books and movies? Mm. What is the real name of the valuable psychedelic spice in the Dune series of books and movies. Didn't know that one. Didn't know that one at all. Did you not? No, I didn't. I didn't know the next one either. I bet Google that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Before we give the answer, it, that. it absolutely is. Totally is. Definitely. Right. Okay. Number number twenty two. Then, which prequel series by HBO was canned after a single thirty million dollar pilot episode? Um, so they went to all that trouble, spent all that money, and then went, oh, no, 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 no. Somebody's so, not getting a Christmas bonus. No, no. Which prequel series by HBO was canned after that single pilot episode? That's 22. Uh, question 23. In Arthurian legend, which character is Arthur's traitorous nephew? Way I order. In Arthurian legend, which character is Arthur's, or Arthur, if you want, traitorous nephew? Number 24. Which computer game is the Netflix series Arcane based upon? Uh, which computer game is the Netflix series Arcane based upon? I remember reading a magazine called Arcane back in the day. Really? Oh, yeah, it was a war gaming magazine. Yeah, a game. Oh, sci fi and DD sort of magazine, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't last long, I don't think. But... Nothing related to this. No, no. <laughs> Nothing at all. Sorry. I dwell on a brain tangent. Sorry. Ignore me. <laughs> uh, question 25. Which miniatures game pits Marvel heroes and villains in a skirmish war game? Which game pits Marvel's. Heroes and villains in a skirmish war game. And number 26. Where is the seat of King Arthur's court? Where is the seat of King Arthur's court? That's 26. Our second Arthurian question of the night. Will there be more? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, no idea. Um, Interesting aside, you know, loads of countries have like an Arthurian legend of uh, their hero waking up to save the, the country and stuff like that in future times. Yeah. Right. Anyway, just an interesting aside. It's not just an Arthurian thing. Um, anyway, <laughs> question 27. If you what? like to watch an in-depth series of me and Andrew <laughs> different minutes. Check out our other linked videos below. <laughs> <laughs> um... I, I had a couple of glasses of this before we started. <laughs> anyway, okay. question 27. Yes. What bolt action campaign book and range of plastic miniatures was finally released in 2021 by Warlord Games? What bolt action campaign 
book and range of plastic miniatures was released in 2021 by Warlord Games. Long awaited oh. by many people. Oh, I, I, I saw this actually. So uh, 28 is what I do know. Which two superheroes may be playing 40k in the future? Uh, which two superheroes may be playing 40k in the future? Warhammer TV can't afford them, I don't think. But <laughs> They'd probably do it for free, to be fair. Yeah, I think it's a game lots of people would want to watch, though, to be honest. Yeah. We need to introduce them to Dead Zone. They're playing the wrong game. Oh, Absolutely, sure. totally. <laughs> the best science fiction game. Best science fiction game. Uh, question 29. In Norse mythology, name the enormous, magnificent hall in Asgard ruled over by the god Odin. In Norse mythology, name the enormous, magnificent hall in Asgard ruled over by the god Odin. Well, that should have been I think he would have a deeper voice to give more gravitas to that than whiny little me. Uh, number 30. What range of miniatures did Perry release in summer 2021? So Perry miniatures, what were the new range of miniatures that they released in 2021, I'm super excited by that. Uh, yes, that's Perry Perry Miniatures. What was their new release this summer? Question 31. Which serpentine water monster was killed by Hercules as, as part of his 12 labours? Which serpentine water monster was killed by Hercules as part of his 12 labours? I reckon a lot of war gamers might get caught out by this one because it's not often um, water-based um, when it appears on gaming tables. That's also very true. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Number thirty-two. Which superhero bought Wrexham Football Club? Uh, I will accept either the superhero or the actor who is most famous for playing that role. I think That's, this is genuinely the one of the most bizarre stories of 2021. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to buy a little football club beginning with a W, why not Wigan Athletic? We were in dire straits at the time. We were in financial ruin. and Maybe you didn't oh, like pies. True, yeah. Too many pies invested. <laughs> uh, question 33. In Greek mythology, whose wax wings melted when he flew too close to the sun? In Greek mythology, whose wax wings melted when he flew too close to the sun? I'm getting to an age where I might want to fly up there just to get the wax out of my ears a bit better. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, because my eyes are a bit dim and I can't see it very well. <laughs> It's the bright speck in the sky. Okay, 34. <laughs> Which game of mech warfare uh, was released by Ash Barker, friend of the uh, channel, Ash Barker of Guerrilla Games? Okay, which uh, game of mech warfare was released by Ash Barker of Guerrilla Games? And the final question, question 35. Which creatures lure sailors or gamers, onto rocks, or new games, with their enchanting voices and music in Greek mythology. Which creature lures sailors, we'll stick with sailors, onto okay. rocks with their enchanting voices and music in Greek mythology? And that's it. That's all of them. Yay! 43, including the eight, of course, movies at the start. Um, there we go. Uh, well done. Uh, Patch yourself on the back for getting this far. Yeah, if you're still with us. <laughs> yeah. we, I suppose we should go through some answers, shouldn't we, really? Let's go through some answers, yeah. Shall we start with the... Uh, no, no cheating, no. The poster round? Yeah, let's let's go back to the poster round. Uh, uh, let's see if I can get back to it. Hang on. Yeah. Well, if I had not closed it on my screen, that would have been useful, wouldn't it? Oh, there he is. It's back. I'd not closed it. I just minimised it. The poster round. Oh, hang on. I, need to put it back I on. hope you're not going to take our faces off these ones. 
I, I, you know what? I should have done that, but I've not done that. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, 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 there we are. Right, sorry about that. You have to edit that a bit out, Andy. I might, I might not. Okay, right, share. Yeah. Here we go. So, uh, here is poster number one, uh, and this is for Ghostbusters Afterlife, which I Excellent thoroughly movie. enjoyed. Genuinely amazing. I really I loved think it. We, Genuinely, we were, loved good, it. we were good additions to the cast. You know what more can we say? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, you say that. I mean, I'm not going to give too many spoilers away, but you get lucky in that movie. I don't. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two was, of course, No Time to Die. Uh, number right. three. Of course, was uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, which I still haven't seen yet, and oh. all my family have now. It's actually pretty good. It's a little upsetting. Never mind. <laughs> uh, number four. Oh, what was he? Number four is Shang Chi: Legend of the Five Rings. Uh, number five is what was it? Kong versus Godzilla. Godzilla versus yeah. Kong, I think. Kong versus Godzilla, or Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, know. it's it's one of them. Godzilla versus King Kong, I think it was. Yeah, I think so too. Or so, Predator versus Alien. One of the two. Number six might have caught a few people out. This is a fantastic little indie movie uh, called The Sound of Metal. Uh, you can catch that on Amazon. It's rather good. Uh, number seven, uh, quite new in the cinema, really. And that is June. I think it's fair to say 40 minutes too long. Right. Again, <laughs> when I get to the cinema these days, <laughs> everyone goes without me. Hmm. Never mind. And finally, number eight is Free Guy. Free Guy. Not free, just cheap. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm sure he, <laughs> he wasn't cheap in that movie. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't. Are you going to buy a Wrexham? Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> it's all right. It's me. It's me. Okay. Right. Uh, that's enough of that sharing that. Um, <laughs> if you'd like a copy of any of those movie posters, then please show me. <laughs> Like the show, and we'll sign in, sign them for you. <laughs> right, okay. Um, uh, so, uh, were you number one? I think you were. I was number one. So let's go through the potluck round question. So, question number one: What range of miniatures is produced by Warhost and Footsaw Miniatures, and includes such heroes as Robin Hood and Maid Marian? The answer is the amazing new range or newish range of the Baron's Wars. There you go. Andy Hopter and Paul Hicks. Um, and the kingdom that your rangers defend in the ranges of Shadow Deep is Alador. Is that right? Aladore? Alador, I think. Alador. <laughs> Alador. There's no enunciation or anything in the uh, or pronunciation in the um, rule book. <laughs> uh, question three. Which British legend sees a knight don a suit of spiked armor to defeat his enemy? The answer is. The Lampton Worm. The Lampton Worm. It's a very simple point story, though. Yeah, I'll put it this way. The night wins. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the person hunting for the six-fingered man in the Princess Bride is... Bride? Bride is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> I genuinely only saw that movie the first time when I was like 35 and I couldn't oh. believe that I hadn't done before. I was just like, this is my it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's insanely good. Yeah. Question five. Who wrote Little Wars in 1913 and is often considered the father of war games? The answer is H.G. Wells of War of the World science fiction fame. So I'm just laughing remembering our... Um... Our action for the next question. <laughs> Who was the mysterious murderer at large in Whitechapel in 1888? Uh, <laughs> it's banned. We get banned off YouTube. Uh. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it was Jack the Ripper, obviously. Uh, of course, let's gloss over that one. Jack the Ripper. Moving on. Jack the Ripper. Question seven. What Prussian military training game teaches battlefield tactics? The answer is Kriegspiel, which literally means... War game in German, and it was a 19th century um, Prussian training thing. A bit like, um, 
you know those ones where you push the little mini the little piece of card around a hex or something like that really i think it's all that oh, sort of level yeah. of abstraction i remember playing the uh, the terrible swift sword oh it was it was, it was neither, neither swift it was, it was certainly terrible but it was not swift yeah it was not swift. this was a re this was a game hal and i played one Christmas time, someone's birthday, wasn't it? And we're, uh, yeah, our friend's uh, birthday. And um, it's about Gettysburg. And we didn't get through half of day one. And we took the entire evening to do that. We marched some troops onto the back of the battlefield. Though. We did. They, them troops, they look great marching on. They, they were marching. Um, question eight. Sorry, we di digress slightly. Um, which 2021 sci fi skirmish game was criticized for the confusing symbols about movement? That was uh, Kill Team. That was Kill Team. I think it still did rather well, though, didn't it? I it think was, so. Uh, I think it, 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 it had slightly confusing symbols. And I'm sure it has strong advocates for it. Yeah, it's progressive. Yeah. So, um, question nine. Particularly associated with Scotland, the Kelpie is a water spirit which often appears in the form of which animal? The answer is a horse. I don't, I don't think there was a horse to mine, I did. More like a rabbit, but... I don't know what horses do. All right. Uh, number 10. What was the uh, sports game of giant robots and monsters released by Mantic this year? That was Overdrive, of course. Overdrive. Overdrive! <laughs> Yeah, overdrive. <laughs> Question 11. What sci-fi skirmish game, often called the best sci-fi skirmish game, received a third edition in 2021? And the answer is, of course... <laughs> Dead Zone. Hashtag Dead Zone is live. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Other uh, science fiction games are available, but why? Lesser science fiction games. <laughs> uh, the Silver Bayonet there, number 12, by Joseph McCulloch, is set during which war? That is the Napoleonic Wars. Um, so you can enjoy Andy playing through some of those uh, scenarios at the minute on the channel. Oh, oh look. <laughs> Just a book randomly aside. I thought it was, was going to be the Silver Bayonet there. No, it wasn't. a random book with his name on it. Um, question 13. The Banshee from Irish mythology, her shriek doth foretell what sort of event within a family? It is a death. Right, a death. A death. A <laughs> death. Oh, Halloween, you not catch Christmas. You said it perfectly that time. Mm. Uh, the sci fi variant of Frostgrave, uh, released this year by Osprey, is called Stargrave, of course. Stargrave. Mm. Not the most imaginative title, but, you know, it's a good game. I wonder if we're going to see uh, more graves. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, genuinely quite a good game. Uh, question 15. Which nautical sound in War Games Company has a prolific hard plastic release schedule? The answer is War Games Atlantic. Uh, did you see, see what we did we there? Did. Yeah. 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 You were thinking it was... Um, I don't know, Dogger or something like that, you know, what those other ones on the shipping forecast. Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dogger Bank. Dogger Bank. Yeah. Uh, the eponymous hero, number 16, uh, the Witcher, is Geralt of Rivia. Rivia? Rivia. Rivia, Rivia, Rivia. I think. Geralt of Rivia. Yeah, not Geralt of the Riviera or anything like oh, that. That'd be an entirely different show. One yeah, that I'd definitely watch. <laughs> uh, in, in question 17 in English legend Lady Godiva is connected to which city in England the answer is Coventry and it all began as she was an Anglo-Saxon lady protesting against Norman oppression I think taxation as well wasn't it yeah. yeah it was no taxation without representation that was her motto well maybe I've got that wrong somehow I don't think so <laughs> the classic Fancy movie. I almost said sci-fi then. Oh, no, no, no. The classic <laughs> fancy movie, 20 years old this year, is The Lord of the Rings, is the series, and The Fellowship of the Ring was that movie that came out 20 years ago. Literally 20 years. I remember watching it in downtown Auckland in New Zealand, and, you know, all my dreams came true that day. Yeah. It, it's yeah. 
many, many geeky years of plowing through lots and lots of walking through the J.R.R. Tolkien's book. Finally transferred onto the big screen into lots and lots of walking. <laughs> Definitely. You were in the heartland watching it as well. Yeah, literally, yeah. yeah they had a giant um, cave troll above the cinema in uh, Wellington as well. Yeah, like a probably full size, I guess. Yeah. Don't tell Boromir. Question, yeah, but not Paul Boromir. Paul Boromir. A bit of... <sighs> Be strong. Be strong. <laughs> Uh, question 19. One of Britain's most famous legends relates to a monster living within which lake in Scotland? And that's correct. It's Godzilla in Loch Ness. That is correct. And which uh, festive, festive, we've got one in here, look. European mythological monster also appears in the Hellboy comic series. That is Krampus. Krampus. You don't want him coming down your chimney, do you? Ooh, no. Yeah. Question 21. What is the real name of the valuable psychedelic spice in the Doom series of books and movies? And I have Googled it for the third time to triple check that it is the case. But the answer is melange or melange. Okay. I, Doom 2, the, the game on the uh, Spectrum or something like that, I remember playing an awful lot of. Oh, Battle just... for Arrakis, yeah. Yeah, Battle for Arrakis, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a battle, uh, before the time where you could select multiple units and you just had to click and move click, every click, single click. Tank individually, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, what a game. Um, yeah. 22, the prequel series by HBO was canned um, after a single pilot episode, which cost thirty million dollars, was Game of Thrones, of course. Yeah, sad to, sad to hear. Actually, they just couldn't get it right. They said, but there is a Birth of the Targaryens or something like that series, which is definitely coming. Uh, so there will be some Game of Thrones prequels, but not quite the prequel prequel that was originally planned. I think if they can recapture some of that magic that they had early on, um, yes. then definitely they're onto a winner. There's a lot of love for it still. I'm sure it would sell well. But £30 million for an episode, that's steep, isn't it? That's, e that's even for HBO and Netflix and Amazon, that's still steep. We could make a whole series of Dead Zone for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Throw that money at us and we'll be almost as bad as we are now. But we're better graphics. <laughs> uh, question 23. In Arthurian legend, which character is Arthur's traitorous nephew? The answer is Mordred of somewhere or other. I can't remember he's of. Some, he's of somewhere, isn't he? Croydon. That's where he's of. Croydon. Yeah. Mordred of Croydon. And uh, the computer game uh, that we're looking for, that the Netflix series Arcane is based on, is League of Legends. Mm. League of Legends. Arcane's got rave reviews. League of Legends, no one can remember that, but Arcane's doing well. Mm. Question 25. Which miniatures game pits Marvel heroes and villains on the tabletop? The answer is Marvel Crisis Protocol, which is incredibly popular, it seems. Incredibly popular, considering it's incredibly expensive to buy any additional miniatures. <laughs> yeah, it's not on my list at the minute. Let's put it that way. Ian Ross has painted a load, so uh, we can just go and uh, borrow some of his. Yeah, borrow. Ian, teach us about this game. <laughs> he'll be off it in six months you'll be able to take him for free <laughs> oh dear uh, the seat this is 26 now the seat of King Arthur's court is of course Camelot uh, the defunct theme park in Lancashire I thought you were going to go with the Spamalot joke to be honest oh I mean, <laughs> it would have been Spamalot. more internationally <laughs> internationally accepted wouldn't it <laughs> Um, yeah. You definitely need to Google the Lego Spamalot song. That is that is well worth a look. That is a, a minute and a half of your life you will always look back on fondly. Uh, question 27. What bolt action campaign book and range of plastic miniatures was released by Warlord Games in 2021? The answer is finally the Italians. The Italians. Mm -hmm. Which are fantastic actually. I should try and pick them up. And the campaign book for no extra bonus points, but just kudos, is Europe's Soft Underbelly. 
And the two superheroes, this is 28 now, two superheroes who may be playing 40k in the future were, of course, Superman and Spider-Man, as they appeared on Graham Norton, was it, in the chat show? Yeah, Graham and, Norton. Uh, Henry Cavill did a uh, marvellous job batting away uh, Norton's somewhat uh, kind of... Uh, Facetious. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't particularly... Uh, Tries to be funny, not really. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but... Tom Holland was like all over that. I was like, I'm talking about yeah. to you. Yeah, definitely up for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, Henry Cavill, he's doing a fantastic job of uh, promoting geekiness, which is great. You know, I think we need more geekiness in our lives, all of us. Um, definitely. So question 29. In Norse mythology, name the enormous, magnificent hall in Asgard, ruled over by the god Odin. The answer is Valhalla. Valhalla. Nice, nice pronunciation. I like the way you pronounce it. Valhalla. <laughs> okay, and the range that Andy was so psyched about uh, that Perry Miniatures are releasing, uh, or they've released now, I assume, released, yeah, summer, yeah, yeah. were the Franco-Prussian War models. So a miniature line for the Franco-Prussian War. The world goes really got that wild. <laughs> Breaks the internet, literally. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just me. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're excited for it. I, I genuinely am, still am. I, I'm not painting them very prolifically, but it is on one of my targets for next year. The resolution to be withheld. Question 31. 31, sorry. Which serpentine water monster was killed by Hercules as part of his 12 labours? And the answer is the Hydra. The seven or seven headed Hydra, I think it was. Exactly. Every time you cut one off, another two row back. Is that correct? I think that's right. I think that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, often in wargaming, not not necessarily modelled as being water-based, usually has four stumpy little legs. Yeah, a bit, bit of like uh, Diplodocus legs. <laughs> Tree trunk legs. Cankles. Well, they, they repurpose some dinosaur sculpts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I did. So, uh, okay, which superhero bought Wrexham Football Club? Not Wigan Athletic. Wrexham Football Club. It was, of course, Deadpool Ryan Reynolds. Free guy. <sighs> Free guy. Yes, him. Question 33. In Greek mythology, whose wax wings melted when he flew too close to the sun? The answer is Icarus. And it didn't end well for him, I'll be honest. No. Uh, number 34, our penultimate question now. What was the game of Mech War released by Ash Barker of Guerrilla Games? Uh, it was Gamma Wolves. Gamma, Gamma Wolves. And the final question, question 35, to give you hopefully a maximum of 43 out of 43 correct, is which creature lures sailors onto rocks with their enchanting voice and music in Greek mythology? And the answer is... The Siren. Siren, indeed, yes. Or Ian Ross in our gaming community who lures people. <laughs> to topical reference for people who were teenagers in the 90s. Um, <laughs> I got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ian Ross, yeah, who would lure people like that um, with his um, new addiction for yet another unique miniatures range that will be dead within 12 months probably because the company folds <laughs> but anyway there we are that was our christmas quiz so i uh, we hope you all enjoyed that so we certainly enjoyed it we had a, we had a glass or two we did we did um, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so um put in your comments below um what you liked about it, if anything, and certainly your scores. Put your scores in there, and we will we will see who is the mighty champion of the 2021 Wake of Fire Christmas quiz. So, thank you very much, everyone. It's been wonderful. Hal and I have enjoyed this experience. Mentioned. Maybe one year we'll get to do it face to face with each other in the same room. Would you reckon? Possibly. Maybe. Maybe one year we could do it like Universe Challenge, where we've got teams and we film it all. Could we? No, no. I I don't think we, should, we, we should get whatever his name is from University Challenge in it, but he's what's his name? I can't remember now. Jeremy Paxman. Paxman, let's get him in. Oh, he'd love it. He would. Mm. He'd get a look down his nose even more. Yeah, we could get um, Graham Norton to do it. Get Graham Norton in. 
Henry Cavill in the chair. That's what we need. That's it. Right. Anyway, I think that's right. probably enough. Um, take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a lovely Christmas and New Year. And Merry we'll see you back for some more geeky gaming and stuff in 2022. Bye. Bye.